So welcome to Prerna Television Canada. On behalf of Global Academy and Holistic Leadership and Coaching, we would like to welcome you for our Leadership Speaker Series. And today is our uh, 84th episode. Uh, today we'll be speaking, um, our, our presentation is Leadership Drivers. And our regular speaker and trainer, Advocate Jia Rahman is with us. Uh, he's the CEO of IITM and adjunct faculty of Independent University. I welcome Advocate Jia Rahman to continue his session. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Can you just uh, give me 20 seconds, please? Okay, so let me bring up the slides. Just one second, I don't know where it's. I believe you can see the slides, right? Yes, go ahead, just full screen, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, having these sessions for the past 1.75 years. We are almost hitting two year timeline. So today's topic is leadership and drivers. We had talked about these issues in elaborate uh, detail uh, previously. But what I'm doing here is bringing some components of leadership and how our leadership has to be driven in the environment in which we operate so as to maximize our output as leaders and we develop the organization forward. So the specific focus would be on the issues that we have to deal with from a leader's perspective and how we can drive the organization forward using our own particular traits and moving with the people with whom we are working. So it's a business ecosystem that we are going to be discussing. So moving forward, uh, today's episode is the 84th episode. Moving into the presentation, I normally start off with some quotations. So we have a couple of back-to-back -back quotations. The first one is uh, says, sometimes you have to be your own hero. It's an unknown quotation. What it says that sometimes you have to technically have a complete belief system in yourselves because people might be suggesting you different ways to do things. Uh, you might have a lot of noise and clutter and you're not being able to properly articulate your way forward. At that point, you might be in a position of confusion. You might think that, am I doing the right thing as a leader? Am I taking the right steps? Are my people going to support me with this endeavor? Am I setting the right vision? Am I setting the right goal? Am I motivating my people in the right earnest? So that would be an issue where you might get a feeling of uh, loneliness. You might see that people are not connecting with you at that particular moment, maybe because you're selling on an idea which is too unique for these people. They don't have the mental grasp to understand what is it that you are thinking about. So sometimes you have to take a stance and be your own hero and guide the team forward. It might be a difficult journey because you might take wrong steps and then there will be a lot of pointing fingers at you. However, the quicker you can understand if there is a failure point that might be coming in your direction, the quicker you understand and you recalibrate your journey in the sense you re-strategize, you change some strategic priorities, you change certain modalities of your business model, and then you proceed forward. And that way you can overcome the obstacles and you can actually grow the enterprise in a much quicker way because we have taken a journey which no one has uh, moved about. So it is, an, it is a journey of uncharted territory where you can quickly gather some opportunities 
and use it to your business uh, advantage, your competitive advantage. Moving forward, I have two short ones here. The first one is make every day a little less ordinary. This is by IndiaCom. What it says that as a leader, if you want to grow as a professional, as a leader in a society or in a political sphere, if you are not doing something meaningful and something additional uh, from your previous day, make it a slightly different, you, you really won't be getting to where you really want to go. It is the extraordinary feats that take people to newer heights, higher heights. So you can't be the mundane, the ordinary, the run of the mill type of philosophy that you are following through on a daily basis. That will take you a certain journey forward, but that may not build the momentum that you truly require to move in the right direction. So that's very important. Take something out of your life and make it a little bit more interesting. So you don't remain ordinary, you become a little closer to extraordinary. It is the extraordinary ideas, it is the extraordinary feats that actually sets the tone of an organization. It sort of builds momentum within the enterprise and everybody gets glued to your thought process and they feel excited uh, because you have set a different target, you've set a different way forward. So the achievement that may roll out would be significantly higher than a normal run of the day type of uh, business engagement. The next one is uh, uh, by, by someone, uh, an unknown person. Without a struggle, there could be no advancement. This is for every leader, every person in life, no matter which position you are, you are holding in your life. If you're not struggling somewhere, that means you're not gaining some understanding. You're not learning some tools. You're not learning to uh, grapple with the life's uh, complexities. If you have a very cushiony life, that means that uh, a certain level of discomfort it has never come in your direction. So you really don't know how to handle discomfort. You really don't know how to um, rise over misery. You don't really know how to tackle problems, you will get all flustered, you will start to panic, you will realize that uh, no matter how educated you are, you are not being able to formulate the right strategy out, and you will be perplexed, you will be puzzled, and failure might be hitting you straight in your face. So the good person who is going through life always goes through certain struggle and you should invite struggles not that you want struggles on a daily basis but we're talking about struggles in the sense of different priorities have come forward you have to navigate your ship in a different direction you were casting your sail in a particular uh, direction based on the wind but the wind has changed do you still have the uh, your sail in that direction probably not because it might capsize your boat so you have to alter you have to readjust your sail and maybe you need to bring your sails down for the next few hours or so because you might be in the middle of a storm so you have to understand the complexities that are around as a professional as a human being and readjust recalibrate your way forward so you can't advance unless you are you are you are being pushed by a certain level of struggle. These struggles give you an understanding and it also gives you a way forward. You realize that certain things will not work. And in the next time, that is wisdom, that is knowledge that you can encapsulate in your journey forward. And if certain situations like this happen again, you at least know ahead of time that what would be the go-to strategy because you have gone there you have seen that seen it and you know how to navigate out of this complex or uh, quizzical kind of scenario so that's very important so as a professional we are to be give facing struggle that is part of life we can't say that a life will go on without struggle that is a a fantastic uh, illusionary thought process that will never happen. So struggles will come. We have to learn how to struggle, how to handle struggle. And then we advance in our career, in our lives, in every sphere that we work with. Moving forward, this is another proverb. A single arrow is easily broken, but not 10 in a bundle. This sort of encapsulate the spirit of 
togetherness. If you're working together as a team, if you are leading, and if, if you can bring other people to work with you, alongside with you as a team. So let's say you have yourself leading the show and you have 10 champion spirits, champion uh, captain-like uh, people who can take on the leadership role if you are not there and they are collectively working with you with your vision and also taking ideas and uh, altering the vision if need be through their active participation they believe in you you believe in them so the engagement is very dynamic the engagement is leading to a successful outcome and things will obviously work out in the nice fashion so if you consider this team as a arrow if you had only one person leading the show and you could break that person and the organization will falter the organization would uh, go in a disarray. It may lose its overall focus because the leader is no longer there or has gone sick or has passed away. So the journey for that organization might be very difficult to take forward. But if you, as a leader, grow your team with 10 people around you, the number 10, I'm just using because it's written in the uh, proverb, but you can downsize it to five or six or three, it doesn't matter. At least two or three people should be re reflective of what your thinking process is, how you're thinking. So the top three people or top five people should be engaging in discourse and understanding how things are to be discussed and formulated. This is difficult because sometimes you as a CEO might be very, very uh, competent compared to the other set of people. So there might be a vacuum, but if you are working with your team members, if you are giving them the uh, ideas and brushing them up and asking them to re add more perspective, uh, gain their knowledge based on the ideas that you are working with, then after a certain period of time, if you have reasonably competent people, logical people, knowledgeable people, they will come up to your speed more or less. And then in your absence, you have basically created a, created a succession plan. And that is all about driving the leadership forward. Without this perspective of driving your team, you are just one shining star. If it works out, then fine. The organization continues to run for a while in, a, in the right direction. But if you go sick or you, for some reason, retire or you're no longer in this world, or you just have a change of heart and you leave the position, then all all the potential opportunities of this house will evaporate the because you were the magic producer you were the you were the champion you were the guide you were the spirit that was driving the vision forward people listen to you that's for sure but you didn't bring people up to your speed and that would be in a position that would put the organization in a position of failure the future will not hold very strong for this organization so the whole idea of a good organization is to create leadership within its ranks so that in place of one person the others can come about moving forward and that would drive the organization forward this is another wonderful quotation it is from a philosophical point of view but it has very strong implications to our thought process as business leaders, as social or political leaders. It's by Rabindranath Tagore or Tagore. I slept and I, I dreamed that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. So it comes a full circle around. Uh, this per, the, the poet went to sleep thinking that life was joy. He dreamt that life was a joyous journey. He woke up and he saw that life had to be a place of service. You have to do a lot of things in order to survive, in order to uh, position yourself, in order to create the enterprises that you're working with. So a lot of service that you have to bring out uh, to society. He realized that life was a, a amalgamation, a, a compilation of service. And he jumped into the act of giving service. And behold, ultimately, he felt the energy passion was there and service became joy so all the work all the hard toil became a joyous journey for this person so the poet is talking about this journey of feeling excited through hard work and service to society service to humanity so 
if as a professional, if we can start thinking of our journeys in life as a joyous journey, then all the work that we do would be driving us with passion. And with that passion, we will not just only drive ourselves forward, we would actually engage the spirit of people around us. And collectively, everyone will be positioned in the right direction and moving with uh, complete uh, collected vision, collected energy, passionate energy in the direction for success. So ultimately in an organization where there is joy and where there is this perspective that a joyous journey through service will create a harmonious outcome for the enterprise will deliver better results. The organization would definitely be more successful than an organization which is considering work as work and not getting the excitement out of the work. So as a professional, our job as a leader is to ensure that whatever we do, we must do it with passion. We must be feeling joyous and we must feel that this is service to humanity and service to society and service to our people. If these feelings are trickling down in our uh, nervous system and our men mental makeup, then we are always in the journey for a happy, successful outcome. So moving forward, uh, what is leadership in the context of today's topic, leadership dri and drivers? Uh, leadership is about driving your team to believing in themselves, to execute a well-crafted plan. So every organization creates a plan, a, a plan of action that they want to achieve at the end of the year or in subsequent years. And with that, they grow your enterprise uh, forward. So with this plan, comes a lot of effort that has to be put in to ensure uh, the human resource people, the people perspective works diligently, actively, and in an engaged manner so that the plan is executed. So leadership uh, from the context of today's session is making people believing, you're driving your people to believe in themselves that yes, we can do the up the achievement that has been given to us, the targets that have been set, the new beginning for the enterprise that we are contemplating, the new products or the new uh, technology and research that we are working on, they will come about. Why? Because I am there, the leader is in the house and everybody is being driven with his or her efficiency, passion, knowledge, and wisdom, and an energy level, so to speak. So they start to believe that we are working as a team and we can deliver because the leader is there and we are part of the team of the business ecosystem and we are going to be executing into a, our, our journey into a successful, well-rounded opportunity for the enterprise. So the belief system will kick in due to your passion because you're believing in yourself and ultimately the organization will succeed uh, gloriously. So moving forward, this is the basic definition. We could have covered it before, but since we have been doing this uh, issue and we have talked about leadership drivers previously, the definition sits uh, here. And what, what is this uh, leadership driver? Leadership drivers are the actions and behaviors of leaders, basically your behavior and your actions that is driving the enterprise forward. Implementation science identifies two types of leadership challenges. One is a technical and the other one is adaptive challenges. So there is a technical issue in leadership driving and there is an adaptive issue in leadership driving. Technical issues are your knowledge space, your skills, etc. And the adaptive issues are the issues which are uh, reflected upon your behavior, whether the team is absorbing what is being suggested by the top leadership. Are we running with the flow? Are we listening? Are we being uh, uh, getting the spirit, energizing ourselves and moving in the right direction? Each challenge has a distinctive set of characteristics and requires different set of leadership skills. So this is important. If you want to lead in an enterprise, this, you have to have these technical leadership driving capacity, and then you also have to be adaptive and you have to make sure the team is also adaptive to your leadership stance. So it's not all about uh, pushing them with technology, pushing them with knowledge, wisdom, etc. It may not uh, it may not work out very smoothly. It is about the combination of uh, being in a position where you are being able to adapt 
and you are being in a facilitative role, like go like a trendsetter who is creating the trend. Others are listen, walking in and looking at the trend and energizing themselves along with the trend, passionately feeling that yes, this is the way forward because our leader is uh, passionate about this journey and it seems like he or she is working in the right direction. So others will come on board. It's like an onboarding of the process and then you are building a different set of skills and building a different set of adaptive skills and adaptive driving skills within the team members. It depends on from industry to industry. Each industry is different from the other. Some industries are very conservative. And in that case, the, the model will have to be tweaked very seriously based on the adaptive culture. The adoption of this spirit would be very, very uh, important and articulated way fashion so that people really realize that these are the way forward and I I ought to be uh, listening in or I ought to be adapting to this new vision or new culture because this is the right path forward. So this is important for an organization to drive itself forward. So the leadership drivers are both technical and more behavioral, both and adaptive. So moving forward, this is a basic cluster, a basic diagram of some components uh, where uh, different issues are at play in designing the leadership and how they are interconnected. So if you are thinking of leadership at the, at the uh, sitting uh, square, squarely uh, on a platform, so that's your leadership in the bottom, it's, which is circles. And then you have on the left flank and the right flank certain things. On the left flank, you have the competency drivers, uh, which is needed for the leadership to grow with and the team members leadership to grow. And on the organizational drivers, you have the different behavior perspective and on the top fidelity. What is fidelity in this case? It's the, it's the truthfulness, it's the behavior pattern, it's the mindset that what we are doing is, uh, is uh, based on, on, the, on ethics, based on truthfulness, and we believe in the leadership journey. So if you have the fidelity and connecting these competency drivers uh, with organizational drivers with leadership, then you have the framework and it is integrated and it is compensatory. So uh, if one component is uh, going a little less, you can compensate with some, some of the other components. So uh, you can't just say that it, all these elements should be uh, in equal uh, uh, percentages. It's not going to be like that. In some organizations, maybe coaching would be highly sought, whereas training might not be so much sought. Uh, in some organizations, uh, selection of uh, the priorities uh, or within the enterprise would be so much more relevant and important than maybe training component. On the right-hand side, if you're looking at the organizational drivers, the systems intervention would, some organization would be very, very relevant. A very complicated organization will have a fair systems intervention because if the systems are not working, then the organization will ultimately fail. We, we, talk, we talked about systems and system, systems thinking in previous presentation and future presentation, we would be bringing in leadership and system thinking. And here we're just using sub component of the systems thinking, which is systems intervention. And the issue of facility administration, obviously organizational management, the how the organization is being managed, whether it's a tech, technically competent management system, whether it's a uh, district based on uh, very top-down management system. So all these are relevant, interconnected. And the decision support system and the data system, the knowledge base that on which you actually create your direction, your decision-making models. So if you're looking at a particular bank, for example, uh, there are these days very relevant decision support system, which will tell uh, you what type of customers you are sourcing, what type of customers you would be giving loan to, etc. So if you are focusing on a financial sector model, uh, your leadership would be very much uh, connected with all the decision supports that you have to 
support you, the MIS integration and all that. So this implementation of drivers is a, a very relevant uh, piece of uh, observation, a very, very relevant piece of um, uh, a, a, a structure, which if you think of it, and then you model it in your enterprise, then obviously you will probably get a bunch of uh, potential areas where you would be doing reasonably well because your process has been systematically designed and well thought out. So that will allow you to deliver better results. So this leadership drivers will bring in more success for your organization. Moving forward, uh, I'm at the end of my session. It's a million dollar question that I normally have. So today's million dollar question is, what is the single most important driver for leadership growth? I would say uh, it depends on the enterprise to enterprise, but uh, the most important driver I would say is your trust. Trust is a driver. If you don't have the trust element within your organization, then things will not work because you're always having this feeling of being cheated. And your team members are also being having this feeling that my boss does not trust me or I don't trust my teammates. If this factor is not uh, very strongly uh, looked upon within an enterprise, then uh, the enterprise will uh, not do well. Because uh, if I have to trust, just like in your family, you have to trust your family members. Otherwise, you will be feeling mis miserable. They will be feeling miserable, no matter how wealthy you are. If you don't have the trust within your family, it will not probably work out nicely specifically with, between, between your uh, husband and spouse uh, type of relationship or father-children relationship. Similarly, the same idea, if you take it to the next level in the context of your professional domain, that is your extended family. You're working with other people with whom you spend five, six hours a day on a, on a 40 hour weekday. So you're dealing with them on a daily basis. So the relevant and most vital component for me would be the trust element and the trust would drive everything forward. If the trust level is high, other issues such as uh, feeling the excitement to work together, feeling more energy, the competence, the need for competence, the need for gathering more knowledge, all of them will fall into uh, proper place. So I would say the singularly the most important element of any enterprise is, that is going to drive your leadership is the trust element, the bonding element, and the proper communication element. Sometimes the trust might be there, but the proper communication setup is not there. So you have misunderstanding between the two people, and that can actually fray the trust level. Although you did not intend to have it that way, but accidentally due to miscommunication, the trust level, the trust factor came down. So as a professional, as a leader, our job is to ensure within our enterprises that we build the trust structure and the bonding structure and the proper uh, behavioral dynamics within the enterprise so that the people within the enterprise are more excited to work with you. They feel confident. They feel that they will not be overly punished because of a mistake. They will feel that, yes, the environment for making mistakes is there. Boss is very, uh, very uh, confident that we will do uh, positive things for the enterprise in spite of the fact that sometimes we will fail and make mistakes. So the trusting element would probably be the decisive component for building the organization forward. So I am emphasizing again that the most relevant organization, most competent organization which are doing successful business and growing have very strong internal bondage, internal trust and linkage between the people. And uh, each person is happy with the other person. So trust will build friendship, trust, builds uh, a convenient enterprise environment for developing more competitive edge, developing more knowledge skills. If you are unhappy in your floor at the place that you work, uh, how can you expect 
uh, people to deliver a potential outcome. It's like you are in the middle of a exam hall and maybe somebody is uh, shouting at you and you're trying to give the exam. It will not work. You will probably miss out on a number of questions. Uh, you will miss out, your thought process will be uh, severely affected. So I would say build trust, build more trust, and then have a friendly environment so that the enterprise moves forward and this is uh, this is true for all types of enterprise it could be business it could be societal it could be political enterprises and uh, i would reiterate that in the political enterprises trust would probably play the most dominant role if i don't trust my uh, my team members in my political uh, process and they don't trust me then the process will never grow so thank you very much uh, edward probably mondol uh, I am Advocate Zioraman signing off from Dhaka. I am the CEO of IITM and adjunct faculty with uh, IUB. And I, we have been doing this session, both Edward and I, for a significantly long time. And we look forward to having you in our next session coming up next week. And thank you very much. And also, uh, we thank you from the Academy of Holistic Leadership and Coaching. So back to you, Edward Probe Mondo. Thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you very much. On behalf of Global Academy of Holistic Leadership and Coaching in Perna Television, I'd like to thank you, uh, Advocate Jia Rahman, uh, the CEO of IITM Adjunct Faculty Independent University. And thank you also the audience. Um, uh, uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, uh, please stay tuned and stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you very much. <laughs>